From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. There is so much going on, as you well know, with what happened in the United Nations referring to Israel and the resolution that they gave there. And a chief rabbi had something that really moved my heart. He said it with this. The U.S. has forsaken Israel, but this is what moved me. We can trust only in the Lord. My, oh, my, coming from a rabbi, from his heart, that should move yours, too. And then, number two, Christians are the most persecuted people, religious group in the world, in the world. Now, I'm going to be referring to that in just a moment, it's having to do with the United Nations resolution. You'll be very interested in what I have to say there, I think. And then veterans forcibly dragged from the Air Force ceremony for mentioning God. All they did was mention their faith in God, and they were forced out of that ceremony. To me, that says a lot about where we're going, friends, in our service. So under the Obama administration, a lot has been enforced, and we certainly need to pay attention to it. Well, I want to report to you that Jack is doing very well. He would love to be here today, as you can imagine, and his heart is with us, and his heart is with you and with the world. But uh, he has made where he's at a mission field, believe me. And uh, I pray that you will just keep remembering him in your prayers. Before long, he'll be back. He loves to be here where the Lord wants him to be. But it is a joy to have Dr. Carl Baugh back with us again. And Carl, thank you so much for coming from Dallas, Texas. Now, as I mentioned last week, he's the founder and director of the Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose, Texas. I failed to mention something last week when he was on with us. In the 1990s, he was co-director of an expedition searching for the Ark on Mount Ararat in Turkey. Now, after 40 years of research in this area, he directed the construction of a 25-foot replica of the Ark in his museum. And he does hold the patent for that and for the wood process that it took to make that Ark. My, oh, my, I just praise the Lord so much for that. And for the lectures that he gives around the world, proving that we did not have uh, an evolution here when it came to the creation of the world. Praise the Lord for that. Thank you for coming again, well, Carl. Dr. Rexella, we've not followed cunningly devised fables. No. when we follow the Word of God. Amen. Scientifically, it can be demonstrated that this Bible, its prophecies, its history, its record is fully reliable. Uh, prophetically, which is what this program is primarily about, as Dr. Van Empe has demonstrated all these years. By the way, I got to see Dr. Van Empe just before the telecast were taped today. Uh, he was jovial and uh, with a broken hip. Uh, he's doing great. And in a very short time, he'll be back. But as he has stated again and again, the prophecies of the Word of God are precisely that, the Word of God. Mm -hmm. They are inexorable. Now, that's a technical term meaning. They cannot be changed and they cannot be stopped. Dr. Rexella has mentioned, and she's going in this program to speak further about the fact that the Obama administration, the Washington administration, has actually behind the scenes determined the downfall of our nation to a great degree by abandoning Israel with the United Nations Mandate Resolution 2334. Dr. Rexella, yes, America's in trouble. Anytime we get on the wrong side of Israel, yes. we're on the wrong side of God's favorite position. Absolutely we are, and I'm going to refer to that right now, Carl. Now, we all were startled. Weren't you startled at what happened with the United Nations resolution? But something else, Secretary of State Kerry's call for a two-state solution. Let's go on here, if you will. I'd like for you to see the first headline. Bennett tells Kerry, pick up your Bible and read it. Now, that's the education minister there in Israel. Going on, the chief rabbi. The United States has forsaken Israel. 
We can only trust yes. in the Lord. Now, I want to uh, ask Dr. Ball again. Under the Obama administration, do you feel that we have forsaken? You know, Israel was our closest ally, the only democracy in the Middle East. And now, have we really forsaken our friend over there, Dr. Ball? Dr. Rexella, May the 15th, 14th on our calendar, 15th on Jewish calendar, 1948. The nation of Israel was born, was announced, and the United States was the very first nation to recognize that Israel was a sovereign nation. That was based not only because of our desire, but based on the Balfour Declaration, the 2nd of November, 1917, which gave Israel the right to the land that the British Commonwealth had held for a long, long period of time. In history, dating back to the time when David conquered the land, dating back to the time when God assured Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verse 7, that all of that land belonged to him, dating back to the Gilgal, the placement of Joshua, Dr. Rexella, Joshua took, had the heads of the tribes take 12 stones, huge stones. I have examined those stones. As you know, I work in archaeology. Yes, absolutely. And I've examined that area. They were not small stones you call, uh, carry on the shoulder of one individual. They were huge stones that required deliberation. They were placed in a position in a huge amphitheater at Gilgal, the late Dr. Yagil was my friend and I had the privilege of excavating with him under the Israeli Department of Antiquities. And he found the site and there was an outline, Dr. Excella, of a footprint because God had promised to Joshua, really? wherever yes. the sole of your right. foot will step. Yeah. I give that to you. So America has abandoned Israel by default. We were the first nation to announce to the world that we recognize their sovereignty as a nation. And as the new president-elect has again reiterated, uh, it is an eternal position that God has given. Jerusalem is the eternal city. All right. Now, you know, this sort of leads to something, Carl, uh, about uh, Israel. Uh, he, last week, he brought some very, very, very special uh, scrolls to us, and the Christian Heritage Foundation uh, allowed him to actually bring them here, and we showed you some very, very special things. And in a moment, I'm going to ask him if he'll walk over once again and briefly uh, announce what they are all about. It proves that Israel all owns that land. That is correct. It goes way, way back to the hundreds and thousands of years. Carl, I'm going to ask if you'll go over there again in a moment and do that, will you? Oh, I'll be very happy to do so. And incidentally, I'm happy to announce that the Jack Benefi Ministries, yes. uh, because of special arrangement with Israel, yes. is now in possession, being a friend of Israel all of these decades, yes. is now in possession of a Torah scroll, oh. and it is the largest Torah scroll that I personally have ever seen, and only select individuals who have demonstrated their respect for the Word of God, their confidence that Israel is in the place that God has positioned them, are privileged to have such a Torah scroll, and it is my special privilege to announce to this global audience, you are among those select few. Oh my, we're so privileged uh, to be able to have that, and we're going to display it at our headquarters here, and we thank God so very, very much, because we do love Israel. That's where our Savior came the first time. That is where he's coming back to set his foot on the Mount of Olives, and uh, praise the Lord that Israel will always exist. Now we'll ask our friend if you would please go over and show us those very special scrolls. Will you do that please? I'll be happy to do so. I'm very pleased that we, under the good graces of the Christian Heritage Foundation of Cleburne, Texas, and the owner, Mrs. Mary Ann Mize, have these wonderful scrolls. This Torah scroll, the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and the Samuels for a distinct reason. We have just passed an epic mark in the history of planet Earth. That is, the entire United Nations by mandate has passed a resolution and declared, as the 
<laughs> laws of the Medes and the Persians that no future administrator, no head of state can alter what they've done. They have passed a resolution stating that Israel is to cease and desist from East Jerusalem, from the temple site, and from the West Bank. The West Bank comprises 40% of the land surface of Israel. It's in the West Bank that this document, this ancient document, going back at least 1400 years BC in its authorship, not this particular copy, but this is a hand copied Torah scroll, but the original Torah going back at least 1450 BC declares, first of all, that all of that land was given, according to Genesis chapter 12, verse 7, by God Himself at Bethel to Abraham and his descendants, specifically through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not through other heirs, specifically through Israel. This also, this document mandates that the tabernacle was to be set up in that land. This document, 1st and 2nd Samuel, verify the practice that for 369 years at Shiloh, the tabernacle was in place. That's in the West Bank. Israel cannot give up. It will give up its own heart, its soul, if it gives up its own heritage. Israel, hold to your position because you have title deed to this property. In addition to that, the 24th chapter of 2 Samuel in this document itself gives you title deed because there King Arona volunteered. David said, I want your threshing floor because the angel of the Lord has moved on me to make an offering, a sacrificial offering with bullocks and fire, and I must get right with God because I have sinned. And Arona said, I'll give it to you. David said, no. I, you name the price, I will pay it. We want ownership of it. He paid him 50 shekels of pure silver, a huge amount in that day. It gives in this document, chapter 24 of 2 Samuel, it gives in this document the land where it was placed. It is now the temple site the specific land, the previous owner who was a king and held the right to it, the purchase by David for Israel, for sacrifice, the amount of the purchase it gives in the title deed, the specific statement that the bullocks and all of the wooden implements would also go into the matter of the offering, and David bought all of those. Israel, you hold title deed to the Temple Mount, to East Jerusalem, to the entire West Bank and all the rest of Israel, we in America respect these ancient documents. If the United Nation does not, it falls into the hands of the living God, and it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. God will preserve Israel. Amen to that, Carl. God will preserve Israel. They will always exist because that's where Jesus is coming back. He was there the first time, coming back the second time. Now, I'm going to go on to something that I referred to right up front of the program. It has to do with this next headline, please. Christians' most persecuted religious group in the world, this study says. And then going on, 90,000 Christians killed for their faith in 2016. There you see it. And Christian persecution reaches global historic high thanks to rise of radical Islam. Oh, my What's wrong? Why would they want to do that? Going on, more Christians killed in Nigeria by Islamist terrorists of Boko Haram. Now, you know, Dr. Ba, uh, we've, we've been talking about this, something that really is in my mind right now. The United Nations can say this about Israel. They never talk about the persecution of Christians out there. They never say anything. How can we protect those for their faith? Have you noticed that, Carl? Oh, yes. And Jesus forecast that in Luke chapter 21 and Matthew chapter 24. Early in those chapters, he stated that the believers, his disciples, and those who would follow them, namely Christians throughout the centuries, 
would be hated of all nations and ultimately the nation of Israel itself would be. And Dr. Excello, there's a reason for that hatred. There's a specific reason. We are the only religious basis that has absolute hope. All other religions work toward a possibility that they would have eternity with God. But because of Jesus Christ fulfilling all of the Old Testament passages, Amen. all of the types, giving us new life in Himself, He has assured us that He is the resurrection and the life, and that we have an absolute assurance that we'll spend eternity with Him. We're persecuted because we have hope. Amen. Praise the Lord. And it's an everlasting hope in heaven with the Lord. Now, Jack said, even before he became uh, hurt, you know, it's that fall where he broke his hip and so forth, uh, he, that he has a great burden for something to happen here in America, an awakening as to how we need to live for the Lord and be looking for that blessed hope. Will you please take a look, please? at the headlines right now. Somebody else is talking about that. Ann Graham, let's, I can feel evil approaching. Our nation is enveloped in darkness. Franklin Graham, the son of Billy Graham, also only guy can save America now. School sends deputy to warn seven-year-old, oh my word, about Bible verses. Veteran forcibly dragged from Air Force ceremony for mentioning God, yes, I mentioned that. American Christians cave on core beliefs. Well, this is one reason why of all the epidemics that we have here in the United States, the epidemic, the pain pills, the heroin, and so forth. It's an epidemic in the United States. Lonely fight, and that's talking about heroin once again. It scourges the rural areas of the country and everywhere across our nation. Again, women paid for drugs by allowing drug dealer to repeatedly rape her 11-year-old daughter. Oh, my. You see how far we've come, friends. And then overview of an epidemic that has to do with drugs. Also of drinking has to do with the epidemic. The, the porn paradox. Oh, my word. Few commentators ever talk about this. And porn in the pulpits. Well, some will talk about it, some won't. I can't take time to give all these reviews here, but the next one, about 75% of the preachers out there, we're not going to talk about it. Well, there's somebody who will talk about it, and that's Jack Van Impey. I'd like for you to see, please, exactly what he had to say. Oh, I'll tell you, there's so much corruption out there today. Everywhere you look, pastors of churches, television evangelists raising money fraudulently on the television set. God is going to send a great judgment one of these days and soon. We need an old-fashioned Holy Spirit-empowered revival to change lives. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That's what being born again does, as I said last week. It changes a life. And if you're still going to the same old places, doing the same old sins, cursing the same God, you will wind up in hell forever. You have not had a conversion experience. You've just had an emotional whopper that didn't do a thing for you, and you think it's all wonderful. Now listen to me. In 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5, it mentions 20 different kinds of individuals and their sins. Think it through, all of you who are listening. The snow also in the last day, perilous, dangerous time shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godless but denying the power of love. From such turn away, because that's the crowd that's headed for hell. You need to get on your knees and say, God, I'm sorry for all these sins. I'm sorry for all these titles that belong to me at one time or another in my life. And I ask you to wash me with the blood of Jesus. Jesus, you died and shed that blood, but we have to ask forgiveness. 
Oh, friends, isn't it wonderful to know that we can have a revival, we can be forgiven of anything in our lives. That's why we are in your home right now. We need a revival, don't we, Carl? Oh, yes, I could not agree more. America has become the religious entertainment capital of the world. When you can't tell the difference in many pulpits and platforms from the church platform and a Hollywood nightclub, America needs an old-fashioned Holy Spirit, Bible-centered Revival. Amen. Very well put, Carl. Well, friends, I've never been so excited about a new, brand new offer in my life. And I mean that. We've done many of them. This one, Eternity. Who? Where? When? Why? Oh, please. I want you to have this. Take a look, please, at the commercial. Eternity. Who? Where? When? Why? is the most astounding biblical video study ever produced by Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Epi. Out of hundreds of predictions prophesied, the greatest and final sign is about to happen when Christ returns as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The event is about to happen, even at the door. Could it occur in 2017 or 18? Be ready. Why? Eternity is forever. Here are seven of the numerous questions answered on this video. One, which of the world's religions is the only one that can get you to heaven? Two, what do most people today believe about heaven and hell? Three, what form did Jesus have before he came to earth, spirit or bodily? Four, what is the rapture and what will happen to our bodies at the time of the rapture? Five, how could the Old Testament saints get to heaven if Christ's blood had not yet been shed? Six, how can we be saved from death, the grave and assured of heaven? Seven, could Jesus return in our generation? Order this all-important video today. There's the 800 number and there's the address. Please make the call. And I meant what I said, friends. You know why I'm so excited about this? Because we're all going there. We're all going out into eternity. And we are in your home to help make sure you're ready to know where you're going, when you're going, and why you're going to the place you're going to go. So please, order several of them. You need to be giving them to friends to make the 800 number call, please. Well, you know, friends, there's so much more that I would like to ask Dr. Baugh before we go into the invitation. One thing on my mind, though, I think uh, 2017 is going to be unprecedented. We have now a brand new president. He's made many, many promises out there about the economics and about the immigration and about strengthening our servicemen's uh, nuclear arsenal and so forth. Carl, do you think he's going to be, be able to fulfill all that? I think so to a great degree. One reason being that his appointments for his cabinet and the vice presidential appointment where the vice president announced at the time of the uh, inauguration, uh, the selection from his own party, and we're not being political at all. Uh, we're simply being biblical and historic. That's, we're giving commentary relative to current events. But he said, I'm a born again Christian, and uh, I'm a creationist, and I'm a patriotic American. I received a letter, a memo, a copy of a memo from a National Science Foundation decrying the fact that the vice president had the audacity on the floor of the House of Representatives to say that evolution was a hoax. May God bless our vice president. Yes, we have hope. With a voice like that, truth can be heard. Right. And you know, the number one thing you said, I'm a born-again Christian. To me, that's yes. very, very wonderful. I think he's going to be uh, really used to the Lord to awaken America uh, spiritually. Don't you, Carl? Oh, I really, I, really do. Already there is encouragement in the camps because his voice will be heard and because the president wants a man like that to, to voice his opinion and for that opinion to be heard along with support for Israel. Yes, I believe there's a real chance that these dreams of America, these prayers of Christians, and these goals of the president can be reached. Amen. And that should be what we pray for. We should have them in our prayers. Do you pray for the president? Do you pray for our Congress? They need prayer too. But my prayer right now is for you. Have you ever opened your heart to the Lord? 
and certainly, oh, if we ever needed to be ready for the coming of the Lord, we need to be ready now. Is your life living up to what you say you are? You can say I'm a born-again believer, but then you go out and live one way. I trust that right now as Dr. Ba will be leading us in prayer. If you haven't opened your heart to the Lord, you will. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming. Thank you for dying for me. I accept you as my Savior. Or I want to come back to you. I want to live for you. If you ha have not done that, I pray that you'll do that too. Dr. Bowie, lead in prayer. I'll be very happy to do so. In these programs, we have seen that current events express to us fulfillment of prophecy showing that we're closer to the coming of the Son of God, the second coming, than ever before. We need to be right with God. Christ died for every man, tasted death for every man. Would you, God is available. He is knocking at your heart's door right now by the Holy Spirit. Jesus wants entrance. Would you simply pray this prayer? Dear God, I'm a sinner. I need you. Lord Jesus, I know you died for me, for my sins. I want you in my heart right now. Step in, forgive my sins, live within me, and I will serve you with all my heart. Amen, amen. You might think that's not a long prayer. It wasn't a long prayer that the thief had on the cross either. He just looked and believed and said, Lord, remember me. I want you as my Savior. How yes. good that is. And if you prayed that prayer with Carl, will you please write to me? I'll send you this little book of First Steps in a New Direction. There's my address. I really want to hear from you. We need to be living for the Lord in these days. And now, whoo, one of the most important productions that Jack and I ever did, most important offers that we've ever had, Eternity. Oh, and here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order Eternity. Who, where, when, why? Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jock Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jock Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rex Allen. Thank you so much, Chuck, and I want to encourage you there. The 800 number in the RC address, the most important offer that we've ever had because it's the most important question. Where will you spend eternity? Jackie does such a great job on here. Make the call right away. I want to leave you with this very, very good thought. You won't stumble in the dark if you walk in the light of God's Word. Oh my, how we need His Word every day. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.